for a brief moment, please try to imagine your uh, high school teacher somewhere in the middle of Slovakia on a regular high school. And it's the second school week of, uh, of the year, it's 10th of September, and you receive an email about uh, a project called Teaching with Hardware, which, where we try to implement a little device called the BBC Microbit, which is a programmable computer, and want to bring them to schools. You've never programmed a microbit, you've never held a microbit in your hand, in fact, you might have never even heard of it. Uh, nevertheless, you decide to participate because it looks interesting and then for some time you don't really hear, hear from us any news because we are busy securing funds and writing uh, applications for grants and then ordering the micro bits uh, and all the hardware we need. Once all of this happens and we have the money and we order the micro bits, they don't come out overnight, so or the whole process uh, is quite long. And by the time the teachers actually receive the micro bits on their schools, it's already four, uh, 4th of October, and, and they have exactly three days to familiarize with those micro bits. Most of the teachers held the micro bit uh, in their hands for the first time and prepare for teaching with the micro bit. And why is this schedule so t um, tough? Because on the 8th of October uh, is, um, is the first school day of uh, the European Code Week, uh, which, if you don't know, is a two-week-long European initiative where, where the 13 schools and, most importantly, s students from 13 schools participated thanks to uh, our initiative and thanks to the microbits in this whole process. And if you can see the the, t the difference between when the teachers actually received those microbits and when they started teaching with them was so brief and so short that it's almost incredible that they were possible to implement uh, uh, teaching with a hardware device, uh, something they probably never even uh, held in their hand before 4th of October. So why was this possible? The BBC Microbit itself is an open source device. Uh, the hardware is open source, the software is open source, and you don't need any licenses, no logins, no login fees to start using it. All you need is a computer, a microbit, and a USB cable. Once you plug it in, you then open an IDE, which is in a browser. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to uh, pay any license for, for any program. You just open the browser, make the code either in, via MicroPython, which is a simplified version of the Python programming language, or via blocks um, in the IDE called MakeCode, which is similar to Scratch. And, and you only hit the, um, the download button, download a code to the microbit, and within 10 minutes you have successfully programmed your first code on the microbit, even though you never uh, programmed any other code before. And this process is so simple that uh, we don't have only schools participating in this uh, process. We also have a voluntary fire department in the middle of Slovakia, which received microbits from us and is now currently teaching us students on three different schools in three different villages in central Slovakia. And this is a photo from one of their lessons. And if you're asking why all the all their hands are raised, it's an answer to the question which of the students want to continue learning with the BBC microbit on the following lessons. Uh, to program a flashing heart on the microbit, you need only two lines of code or two different blocks. So that's how simple it is to create your own code. And we are now in the middle of the European Code Week, and uh, in the last week we had more than 330 students with act uh, which actively participated in programming the microbit. The vast majority of them programmed the microbit for the first time in their life, and all, most of them, almost all of them, really liked the idea of microbits and really wanted to uh, continue. We know this because all of those students had to uh, click out feedback from, uh, forms which, which come to us, so even the teachers don't know what they clicked out, but we do know. <laughs> and we didn't choose only the, the, the students who wanted to program or wanted to do with hardware. Uh, we, we decided that we want all students uh, that can to participate in it, and therefore teachers use these materials and use the microbits on regular uh, informatics lessons. And uh, the easiest metric to show is that the amount of boys and girls which programmed the microbit was uh, almost uh, the same, and uh, and 
the girls liked programming the hardware and programming in general as much as boys did. So this is a nice way how to show that you can do a project and empower women in programming without, without specifically targeting the girls or, or women. I haven't really mentioned the methodical materials now. This is probably the one th single thing teachers cared most about. And of course, there's a lot of open materials and open resources we could have translated it, uh, from uh, English. However, this isn't really that, uh, that simple to do because we have our own school curriculum, we have our own financial and, and, and uh, uh, schooling constraints, and so we didn't uh, have the ability to train those teachers because of the tough schedule. Uh, so that meant that we had to create our own uh, own materials which which were fitted. Nevertheless, we, we really used uh, a lot of uh, materials which we uh, uh, which we then translated and used parts of them. Uh, so so that made our work much more simpler. Uh, after these materials were published to the teachers, uh, we we are now expecting after these two weeks of the European Code Week uh, a detailed feedback, uh, and and uh, after we uh, make the appropriate changes to the to the materials, we will then publish them under a Creative Commons license to every other school to use and every other teacher in Slovakia to use. Feedback won't be the only thing which we'll require from the teachers. Another thing we want from them is to create at least one or two uh, materials of their, own. The, of their own. That means that either some kind of worksheet or a, or a, a, lesson, a, a lesson plan for the students and, and this they create on their own or they translate from, from a different language or mash up some, in, in some sort of way. Then act, actually use it on their lessons, uh, make it better, improve it and then put an open license on it and share it out with us and we will then uh, publish it on our website. This way we not only are giving teachers open, openly uh, licensed materials and resources but we are actually ac asking them to create uh, openly licensed uh, resources. And once they create them we, we, are, we call them all to one big conference uh, the organization responsible for this project is Slovak Python User Group and we started four years ago uh, with an with, uh, initiative where we started organizing the conference called PyCon which is um, aimed at Python developers. Uh, but on the second year of the conference, we also added a special section for teachers. So during that conference, we also have uh, uh, numerous teachers from uh, ra ranging from primary schools to university teachers. And we bring them there and they talk about their materials, their experience. And this is exactly the place they will, where, we'll, where they will share their, their materials which they created during our project. Another thing which we organize uh, during the, uh, the conference is a workshop called Django Girls. And, and uh, during this uh, workshop, uh, we, we bring girls which never programmed before and, and uh, they learn how to program in Python and in bas uh, basic uh, uh, GitHub repository skills. Which uh, uh, and the most important thing is why I'm saying this is that this material uh, is open source, and open openly licensed, and it's uh, here from Poland. So and it has been translated to more than a dozen languages and used uh, in in countless countries around the world. So I've talked a bit about the microbits, but I've never really explained what it is. It's a small programmable computer, and let's say you're a big fan of, of Christmas tree lights and you want to uh, program them in a way how you decide to, to, to lit, but, and uh, what color, and what intensity, and what speed. So you, all you need is a microbit, a power source, and obviously a LED lights. And then you need a Christmas tree. And if you're crazy as me and decided to do this in the middle of April, which isn't exactly Christmas tree season, you have to create it from cardboard, paint it, decorate it with Christmas decorations, and you have your very own Christmas tree. Another example which kids really love is programming uh, sound. So we, uh, I had one girl on a work workshop program the uh, entire theme of uh, Harry Potter with the BBC Microbit on a really simple uh, speaker which, for which you only need a microbit, a regular speaker and two cables. If you add two more cables and a, and a banana, you can create uh, 
uh, banana key uh, banana keyboard. So that uh, when whenever you touch the banana, you start playing sound. Okay, so uh, and all of these projects uh, are really versatile, and students can uh, change them or create a, a completely something new, which means that uh, basically every hardware project is different. So what we want from students is to document the, the their process of creating this by a text, uh, ideally a written manual, step by step, easy to replicate, and then we want them to create a video of it. And you probably see where I'm going to. We want these students to put an open license to it, send it to us, and then we can publish it to the rest of the students and rest of the teachers in Slovakia so that they have more materials from uh, high school, secondary or primary school uh, students to the to their peers. So that's why it's even more valuable. And we're not only giving openly licensed resources to those students, we are asking them to create ones. And of course, we're going to make a contest of it and the best resources will receive uh, prizes. So thank you for your attention.